Welcome to May. <laughs> I can't believe we're already in to May, but um, I want to, I gave everybody a few shout outs today on the team page, but I wanted to shout out Rachel, um, Rachel Vernon, Meg, and myself for um, having success club points on the board so far this month. Uh, again, we're on day two, so I'm not really worried about that at all. Uh, we finished out the end of last month. Amazing. We were just under helping a hundred people last month. So that was amazing. Um, just a reminder, payments for the Summit House are due by June 1st, so we have one month left before payments are due. Uh, make sure that if you have a spot in the house, you get me that payment before June 1st. Um, I want to give a huge congratulations to Marcy, who locked in her uh, Emerald this month. Um, she This is her first month actively coaching, so she is officially an Emerald coach, so I wanted to give her a big shout out. Um, and that is all I have for a presentation tonight, because we're going to watch a little video. And the video is going to be all that you need. But I wanted to talk about our next challenge group because nobody has heard what we're doing next. So um, I don't know about you guys, but I, we're loving the teams. Having teams to hold you accountable to having to get those points. And if you don't get the points, then your team doesn't get the points. So it's like helping hold you accountable to um, the actions of the group. Um, I know that the point system isn't the best system this month because most of the points are from the actual game and not our health and fitness. So we're going to change that up a little bit next month, but we're going to do a new style game. The next challenge group is going to be called finish the lyric. So we're going to do a, um, one, one post per day and it's going to have song lyrics and whoever finishes the lyric first gets the points for their team. So the, uh, the post is going to be posted randomly throughout the day. So it could be in the middle of the night, could be in the middle of work day, could be in the middle of the afternoon, could be in the evening, whenever. It's going to be randomly posted throughout the day. So someone on your team, there's 10 of you. So 10 of you should have a chance that you can, um, somebody can get there and check those out. Um, some of you are working during the day, get it. That's fine. They're not all going to be posted during the day. Um, but we are going to just do it one time randomly throughout the day. Um, and whoever finishes the lyric first correctly gets the points for their team. Um, we'll also be doing points for sharing those, um, workout pictures, sharing the Shakeology photos, sharing, um, sharing on our own social media. We'll have the point system and everything to give to you, um, as the days get closer. Maybe. Okay. Maybe we'll do more than one a day. We'll talk about that later, but, um, probably not though, just because of keeping track of the group, but we'll, we'll figure that out later. And, um, then the requirements for that group must be on Shakeology or Energize and Recover within the past 30 days. Okay. So everybody has to have an active order within the past 30 days to continue into the group. Um, new, new coaches, new customers, all welcome to join. Um, something we're going to do a little bit differently is we're going to have a unit section. So in the unit section, we're going to do um, preloaded before the group even opens. We're going to have prep week. We're going to have meal planning, meal prepping, how to use your beach body on demand, group guide to like manage the group and stuff like that. So that way, if people come in later, they can just go right to the unit section and they'll have everything there and they won't feel so lost they'll be able to like catch themselves up right, right away. Um, so that way they don't have to be there on day one to like, or scroll back through posts or anything like that. Um, this is going to be a co-led group between Ashley Miller, myself, Taylor Perry, and Holly. Um, the diamonds on the team who are participating in the group. So there's going to be a co-led group. Everybody, those, the four of us will each take a week to post our, like post the posts throughout the, the challenge, but it's going to be consistent images. So you guys will know when it's a coach post. Um, and we'll do teams of 10 again, okay? So we're going to start marketing that. I'll, I'll start another little group like we did for the last one where it says like how to, how to like do this challenge and stuff. And I'll give you guys invite scripts and I'll give you little images you can use, that kind of stuff. So um, I'm really excited about this group. Something brand new. We've never done this before. I don't think any coach has ever done this before. So it should be fun. Um, and we'll do prizes. Um, okay. So you guys can be talking about that. You can be sharing about that in your stories. You can be inviting to that. That is the next group, and it's going to start on May 13th. May 13th, and it's going to be a four-week group. Okay, so 28 days. All righty. We are going to um, talk about it for just a minute. 
consistency. Um, I find, and we all find, that the easiest time in our business is in the first couple days, couple weeks of our business when you post for those first few times and all these people, like all these new people are liking your posts. All the new people are coming to you being like, what are you doing? I want to do something too. And you have this really hot market. As soon as you start dipping into that hot market, you're like, I'm using up all my people. I've invited everybody I know. Now what? Then you dip into a warm market, right? So the warm market is like people you kind of know, people that kind of know you. Um, and then when you tap out of those people, you're into your cold market. People that don't know you, they're complete strangers. So the problem being is if you go from warm or hot, warm to cold without building that cold market in the process, you are going to feel stuck. You're going to feel like defeated. So that's why we tell you from day one to be building your cold market be adding those connections that you've never met before. So that way, as you're using up your warm market, you're getting, you're making new connections with your cold market. So that way, when you, you run out of those people, you're meeting in the middle at an area where you can um, have built some connections with some people that you didn't know. And that should continue to grow. So for example, for me, I, I ran out of my warm market and now I am completely cold market for the most part. Like everybody I talk to is cold market, but even my cold market, I've been talking to them for two years because two years ago is when I friend requested them, right? So those cold market people have kind of yeah. become warm market. That is your that is your goal is to be building that cold market from day one. Um, it's super easy, guys, to get frustrated and like sell a couple challenge packs in the beginning and then um, get down on yourself and be like, this is too hard. Like this is, nobody's, nobody's answering me or the same people are messaging me. That's when it gets, that's when it gets tough, but that's when it changes. That's when things actually become a business for you. When things don't get easy anymore, that's when it becomes a real job, right? When it's not super easy, but when you have a real job, you get real money. So that is when you need to dig deep. That's when you need to sink those toes into the sand and you need to keep going. So we're going to watch a little video um, from a top coach that she did this video in the Beachbody Champions page. If you guys aren't part of the Beachbody Champions page, it's on Facebook. You guys can um, request to join the Beach by Champions Facebook group. Um, new coaches, new coaches, pro coaches, uh, successful coaches go in there all the time. Um, they are, you can't just go in there and go live. You are requested by corporate for a specific reason to go in there and share about something specifically. So um, we are going, okay, we're going to listen to the top five tips on how to improve your invites. Because I feel like that is the hardest part, right? Getting people to open our invites, getting people to read them, to respond to them, to like get them to reply and say yes to them. So we're going to um, talk about our five, five tips um, to improve your invites to your challenge groups. But I would like you guys to be taking notes because we will just kind of like we always do share at the end um, our, our takeaways. Okay. I'm going to share my screen. Make sure, because I'm using the headphones and stuff, can you guys just kind of give me like a thumbs up once it starts playing that you guys can hear this okay? Can you hear this? You can't hear it at all? Hold on. I'm going to unplug this, but I, the whole Starbucks is going to have to hear it. Hold on, let me see if there's a way. You know what? Can I ask? I'm going to stop sharing real quick. Um, can I ask someone else? Ashley, can I ask you to pull this video up and share your screen so that I don't have to play it here for all of Starbucks to hear? Okay, I'm going to I'm going to send you the link in the chat in the, in the chat box real quick. Um, and then I will just have you share your screen. You'll just have to unmute yourself. Hey, Try clicking oh. share so on the bottom. I'm talk to you today about my top five tips on to how to invite to a challenge group. Can you I'm see it? Wait, like maybe 30 seconds and give you a quick little snippet about Wait, me, I... who I am. 
um, while some eyes hop on here. So my name is Ashley Bell Dyson. I am from Baltimore, okay. Maryland. Well, originally yeah. from upstate New York, live in Baltimore, Maryland now. I was a first grade teacher, now full-time coach, and I have been so honored to have the chance to share my inviting tips with you guys. So let's dive into it. Um, I honestly think I was asked to speak on this because I was so terrible at it before, and this is one of my strengths in the business now, is really just to how to speak and hone in on who it is that you're talking to. So I'm going to give you my five tips, and then at the end, I'm going to give you a little bit of an action step because I've been doing something in the last four months in my business that has completely altered everything. Um, bigger months, higher paychecks, more coaches signed, etc. And I'm really going to give you that call to action and I hope that you guys follow through with it if you're not already doing something like that. And if you have seen me before speak on team calls, I'm sure you've heard me talk about it. But it is like my baby it has changed my business so I'm excited to talk to you about it. So what are the five things? I am going to look over here because I have my list of five things written down. First thing is creating an action plan and knowing when you're going to do things, what you're going to do that month. And so I'm gonna, I'll go into why I'm, you know, why I had to focus on that, but that's the first one. Number two is understanding what your tribe is looking to accomplish. Number three is building invites that get through to people. Number four is utilizing your stories as a public invite. And then number five is squashing objections in order for them to see their potential in your challenge groups. Okay, so let's go back to number one, creating an action plan as to when you're starting and what you're starting. So for me, this was my missing link in my business. I was like looking for anybody with a pulse, and I'm sure a lot of you can agree at the beginning of our business. We are just like taking everybody, we don't care what they're doing, we don't care if they're in psychology, we don't know when they're starting, we just kind of like sign them up and we're looking for the next person. And that was my biggest weakness in my business when I got started. All of 2016, that was my biggest weakness. So I realized that I had to create a rock solid plan for myself in order to really build a structured business. Organization, not only that, it's really easy to duplicate once you have, once you have incredible systems instilled in your business. So I just needed to be on top of my schedule. And so for those of you who aren't right now, build a, a monthly marketing plan. So when are you going to start your challenge groups? When are you going to start your coaching sneak peeks? Whatever groups that you're running. But more importantly, when are you going to start your challenge groups? And so here are some questions that I'm going to ask you in order for you to develop a plan. When will you start? What will you call it? How many people do you want in it? What will you be focusing on? Will you have incentives? Will you have a daily post? Will you be counting points? Will you be running it with another coach? Will you have a challenge tracker app? Will you make it mandatory to have Shakeology or the performance line? What program will you be doing yourself? And so by having these questions answered and knowing your, your invites and, and the way that you're speaking to people, you're going to have knowledge, you're going to have confidence, and you're going to know exactly when you're going to get started and the type of person you want to take along with you. And so having the plan is going to make your invites much more fluid. And so the next three, the next four things are really just about how to invite. You've got to develop a strong plan. When I started, I would say I started really creating a monthly marketing plan in January when I sat down and said, said to myself, okay, I can't have another year of like stagnant income. I need to have, a, you know, I have to have an increase in my income. And in order for me to do that, I have to reflect on what's working and what's not working for me. I was all over the place. Develop a plan, okay? So once you've developed a plan of when you're starting, how many people you're going to start with, what are you going to call it, you know, so on and so forth. All those questions I just asked you, I'm going, you, you really want to understand who it is that you are looking to, you know, looking to get through to. Who, is, who are these people that are going to want to join you and what are they looking to accomplish? This should be really easy for you to determine based on who you are, who you were pre-Beachbody. So a little example, for me pre-Beachbody, I was a 21-year-old struggling first year, first grade teacher, going to grad school, putting on weight like crazy, living in my boyfriend's parents' basement with an empty cup, like cracked and bruised cup. I just had nothing, like I was just defined by my teaching job and going to grad school to be a teacher. And so I just needed an outlet. I needed, you know, I needed somebody to look at me and say, here's your meal plan. 
here's your trainer, here's your support, and it just creates simplicity. So I know that that's the type of person that I want to bring on to my challenge groups. I know that that's going to be what they want to accomplish. So you really got to understand who it is that you want to talk to by reflecting personally who you were pre beach buddy. Okay? Are they looking to lose weight for spring break? Are they looking to get ready for wedding season? And so I kind of brought up this point because uh, I think it was Melanie Mitro talked about this at NLC this year. She mentioned, you know, the beginning of her business, she took a little bit of a plummet when she uh, didn't really know how to run challenge groups. Of course, at the beginning of our business, we don't know how to run challenge groups. We don't even know what challenge groups are. Um, but she was trying to basically create everything her coach was doing. But Melanie was like, I'm getting bikini ready. Like she promoted this bikini ready boot camp. And in actuality, she didn't want to be in the bikini. That wasn't something that she could attract. So she couldn't attract those type of people and you know at all in her tribe because she wasn't personally wanting to get ready for a bikini. She had just had a baby. Instead, she had to translate that. She she reflected, she said, okay, why didn't this work? And it was because that wasn't her truth. She needed to translate that into exactly what it was that she was looking to accomplish because that's what's going to, that's what's going to help you talk, not to everybody, but talk to those certain people that are going to want to join you. And it makes it so much easier once you find that person. And so ask yourself, who was I pre beach by? Who am I trying to be every single day? Um, are they looking to lose weight for spring break? Are they looking to get ready for wedding season? Are they looking to, you know, lose, get their baby weight off? Are they working to feel sexy in a cover up? Are they eager to find something that they can control? For me, that was a huge one. I wanted something that I could control outside of teaching. Are they looking for routine? Are they looking for support? Are they looking for culture? And so, it's, you know, again, that should be a direct reflection of who you are and, and what you need in pre-beach body. That's going to be so easy for you to share your story and, and be transparent and allow them to see themselves in your story. Um, so once you've kind of found out what it is that your tribe is looking to accomplish, build invites that get through to that goal, okay? Make it about them. The worst thing that we can do in this business, and I know we've all seen this, is make it about us. You, I'm, I'm sure you've all gotten one, but you get a message, message and it's like, hey, you know, I'm, I'm looking to hit a quota. Do you want to you wanna see my link? And, and they send you your link anyway, and then you have to go buy something so that they can hit their quota. You know, we don't want to make it about us. We want to make it about them. We want to make it about the person we were however long ago it was that you got started. So creating invites based on that, with that in your mind, is gonna make them so much more fluid and it's gonna get through to those people. And the people who are in your tribe are gonna do you a favor and filter themselves out so that you can talk on, really talk to the people that, you know, that who, you're, who is your real audience, all right? So make it about them. Offer something that you know that you cannot deny. For me, personally, when I was 21, I think I might have, yeah, I was 21 when I started Beachbody, I know that I could not deny the fact that I needed somebody to basically align me a meal plan, align me a workout plan, and be my cheerleader. That is what I need. I know that my audience, my tribe is going to need that. Ask yourself, what did you need? three, two months ago, three years ago, seven years ago, what was it that you needed? And, and, and help align your invites to that. And so here's an invite that we don't want to send. This is a, this is a very self-centered invite, okay? Hey, name, I have two spots left in my May accountability group, and I'm really looking to fill them up. Want to take one? So you do mention your May accountability group, which is awesome, and that's going to make sense to them if you're talking about it on your Instagram stories and through your content. But... You're saying, I'm looking to fill them up. Do you want to take one? You're not really showing them the value you have to offer them. You're not really showing like, you know, if I, would you? And so that method has really worked in my business. I'm a heavy inviter. I don't have a ton of followers, but I know that my followers that I do have are my authentic audience. And I, I, mean, I work with them and I get them goals and, I, and, and they are my tribe. And I'm consistently finding new people, but inviting really helps hone in on those people who need that final hook so instead of saying things like you know what can they do for you translate that into what can i do for you know what can i do for them so here's a, a simple invite that i might send uh hey name it's may what do you have uh, planned this month if i were to help align you to a meal and workout plan to prep for summer would you want to hold each other accountable for 21 days now keep in mind that's something that i personally would send 
Now, your tribe, your target market, your audience might be much different than mine. So if you wanted to instead take out prep for summer, you can take a peek at their Instagram profile. That's the name of Instagram. It's very personal in an impersonal way. Um, go over to it and see that they're getting ready for a wedding. See that they just had a baby. See that they're going to Greece in two weeks. See what, what they have to look forward to or whatever, you know, might be going on in their life. And instead of saying, get ready for summer, fill in the blank and then help them see that, wow, you know, she does really care about me. I see her showing up to herself every single day. I see her being transparent. I see her changing her own life. But she's, you know, she's doing this for other reasons than just to make a sale. She's doing this because she sees me on the other end and she wants me to get, you know, get me to her goals. Um, so that's just a simple invite that I would send. So if you're not, but if you're sending these invites, like if I get a coach who's like, oh, I'm sending all these invites, I don't, I'm not getting really great results. And I go to their Instagram profile and I'm like, girlfriend, where, where are your, where's your content? You have a post that's since last Thursday. Like I don't even see an Instagram story of your face talking. They don't match up. You've got to make, you've got to make your invites make sense. If you're sending invites and you're not show, building that trust and filling that trust in that relationship, then people aren't going to say yes. Trust is what this business thrives on. It's what's going to get people to look at you and say, wow, she's showing up to herself every single day. I know she's going to show up to me every single day and be that cheerleader that she promised me. So utilize your stories as a public invite, guys. But before you can do that, you got to get into the proper mindset. This takes belief, like real hard belief. And I know that if you're listening to this call right now, I haven't even looked at the number of people who are watching this call, but if you are looking, if you are watching me right now, hearing me talk, you are on this call for a reason. You're on this, this live training for a reason. Not because you are looking to hit success with 100 this month, I hope not. Not because you're looking to get a higher paycheck, but because my, you know, my topic was improving how to invite to a challenge group because you know you have an incredible gift to give people. And that starts with belief. But in order for you to have that belief, you've got to start. And for me, a, a big chunk of why I feel like I'm successful in this business is that I've completely tr transformed my life. And if anything in the world that I believe in, it's this, because it's the one thing that has brought me so much freedom. And whenever I go to send an invite, whenever I sit down to send an invite, I know damn well, sorry, my mouth swear. I know damn well that $180, sure, for some people that's going to be tough. For some people that's a, a week of groceries or whatever, maybe even a month of groceries. But I will instantly tell them, girlfriend, I will spend, I would spend $5,000 if I could go back in time on that 21 day fixed challenge pack that I spent $160, $140 for. I would go back and spend $5,000 on it if I knew that I'd be exactly where I am today three years later. And that's the type of belief people start to feel from you. Not by your inviting, not by your, you know, by your behind the scenes stuff, but by you sharing your passion like wildfire and that consistency showing up to yourself every single day. That's where the belief starts, okay? So get in that proper mindset when you start your Instagram stories. And, and you know, you have an incredible gift to give people. You have a challenge group that's going to transform their life and that is just going to roll over month to month. Okay. Again, you've got to find those people who feel the way that you feel and help them unfeel that way. So envision your avatar. Sometimes I'll get on my Instagram story and I just like make video after video after video. And I'm like, Ashley, oh, this, first of all, it's taking you an hour to get a 15 second clip out. Like stop, center yourself back in. Like, who are you even trying to talk to? And I like, try to jot down a couple notes and I like get myself together and I hone in on who it is that I'm talking to. The coolest part about this business is that we're just trying to talk to ourselves. We're trying to talk to a, a person at a different season in our life. So my season three years ago was much different than where I am now, but I've been her. So I know how to talk to her. It just takes a lot of centralizing and, and realizing how to talk to her and how to get through, with, through to her. Reflect on that. Let's speak to her. Don't cloud your Instagram stories with print. Print after print after print. Yes, make cute graphics, and I'm going to talk to you guys, give you a little bit of advice with that in a second. But if you can talk about something and allow people to feel your emotion, you are going to get such a better result out of it. Every time I have a challenge group, and you can go pop over to my Instagram right now, I made one yesterday. I just get on and I talk about like two clips. So I'll have, like, let's say I know that my challenge group is starting May 14th, and I have 12 available spots left. 
Okay, so my first two clips will basically be me showing up, telling them or reminding them about my May 14th challenge group. And then my next one might be about what they're gonna get with it. And I'm like, I'm sharing my excitement, I'm sharing my passion and just sharing those two things. And on the next, on the next slide, the next story, because we're right clicking through it, will be a little bit of a graphic that I made. And I actually took this idea from Brittany Leggett, who I love to death. Um, and she makes really cute graphic, you know, it, it's obviously she's successful, she, it, it works. She's putting her little flair into it. And instead of taking other people's graphics, like when people screenshot my graphic and put it on their story, I'm like, come on, go make your own. But go on to Canva. If you guys go on to Canva, you don't even have to have the paid for version for this. Go on there if you have a poster, it's called poster. And it's almost, not exactly, but it's almost the perfect fit for an Instagram story. If you take like a centimeter off on each side, you will have the perfect Instagram story like a perfect Instagram story template. And so every single month I make two. I make two different templates. My one is the, the name of my boot camp. I'll say like May boot camp or whatever I call it that month. And then I'll have it numbered with the amount of names that I want in my group. And so this is gonna, obviously this goes back to having your detailed plan at the beginning and knowing what you wanna call it and how many people you want in your group. And so this month I had it numbered one to 12. And so I launched the May, the May boot camp and just felt told everybody about it at the beginning of the month. And so consistently every couple of days, I'll be posting that in there, showing people that the names are filling up and tagging my new challengers in there. And then they feel cool. And I'm giving them a little bit of shout out. And then I'm putting like seven, seven spots left. And then like an arrow and like a gift, just gift. And then um, I'll, you know, more spots will fill up. It'll be like two spots left. And then on the next page, I'll do some, like, like, two to three before and afters of my own clients. And so the reason I say my own clients is because having that accountability for myself, knowing that I, each and every single, every month I need new clients to show on my Instagram story, makes me be a better coach, makes me show up to them and want to get incredible results for myself, for my accountability sake, so I can pull them on my Instagram story and share that with the world. And so I'll like say, check out, um, like a gift um, arrow and say, check out my girls from my last boot camp and I'll share three of them. And then at the end, I'll do a poll. And so just get into the routine of it. I do this whenever I'm about to launch my challenge group, I do it like two to three times a week. And by having that poll, it gives you a way to, to, to go in and message everybody. Also, I invite people based on the ones who stick around till the end. They, they're a little interested. So I go to those people who are actually watching my story and I'm gonna share my method in a second of inviting. Um, but I go to those people who are watching all the way to the end and I invite them and just, and just ask them if they're interested in joining me. Um, but utilize your Instagram story, okay? Um, and that's what I do. I just update it as I go. I make those three slides updated as I go. If you do want a little bit of an example, I did put it on there yesterday. It's still on there, you can take a look. My handle is Ashfeld Dyson. All right, last one I want to talk about, and then I'll do and share my Instagram or my inviting method and then open some questions. So, the final one is squashing objections in order for them to see their potential. And I know that you might be like, well, this doesn't go with inviting. I think this goes, I think publicly inviting to a challenge group is huge. So, we hear the word no. Instantly, we have to turn that into opportunity. Every time we hear a no, we have an opportunity to do something with it, okay? The best way for you to publicly invite people to your incredible challenge group is to know that, that it will change their life, and you've got to feel that through your content, okay? So we're going to squash those objections. All the objections you hear in your inbox, we're going to squash them. Spread that passion and just relate. Always relate to people. Don't feel like they're out to get you if they send you a, um, you know, if they send you a, a no or not right now or whatever they send you, don't feel like they're out to get you. Take it as, all right, this is an opportunity to do something much bigger and spread that passion and just relate. So let's say you get the objection, not enough money. You always say, done there, sister. I know the feeling, you know, but, and I, and I always say, I was a full-time grad student when I started this, started this program. I had pennies in my bank account. But I knew that if I was going to spend money on anything, invest money on anything, it needed to be my health. And of course, they're not going to respond right away with, oh, you're so right. Maybe they will. That would be awesome. But it's not going to be like an instant change. But it is going to be another 
plan that you just watered that seed and show them that you've been there and they can see themselves in your story a little bit. Now take that objection and create a post about it. You know, if Sally has that post or if Sally has that mindset or that objection, Sue, Sam, and Sarah probably all have that objection as well because your audience are going to be very similar. Your tribe is going to be very similar. So create a post out of it. Maybe not as soon as she gives you that objection, you make a public post about it. But go in your notepad and, and create something up that is really talking to your tribe and give them a call to action. Tell them about your next boot camp. Okay? Not enough time is a huge one. I always say, oh, what is time? I actually started this because I was a full-time first grade teacher living in my boyfriend's parents' basement and going to grad school every next week. This program is built for busy people. Um, you know, would it be worth it to you to, to wake up and just do 30 minutes a day to like have that mental clarity throughout the day? And, and, and I, asked them, I asked them that question. Of course, again, it's not just that instant yes, but it's another seed planted. Build a post out of it. Publicly post it on your, on your, you know, your Instagram or your Facebook profile. There's a public invite right there. Give them a call to action. Boom. And if you do a call to action, you only get one person out of it. Like one person, that's so worth it. If you just get one person to drop an emoji, so worth it. All right. Another objection, last objection before I share my inviting method. I've tried everything. My favorite, like I always say, girlfriend, yo-yo is my middle name. But listen, if it changes your life, even a fraction of what it's changed mine, you'll be forever grateful. I'm just sharing my belief with her. Um, and I always say, you deserve to try. You know, would you, would you give it a shot? And then, again, build a post out of it so that Sally has it, Sam, Sue, and Sarah can all feel that public invite as well and get and really get that objection squashed. Okay, so if you have any questions, please ask them in the, uh, in the comment box. I don't see any yet, but I'm gonna share with you my inviting method. So if I can give you any advice, any advice at all is to, you know, make up, make up where we don't have talent in numbers. I, in January, I think I started my Instagram profile with like 2,100 followers, and I knew that I wasn't gonna hit success with 100 or whatever my goal was, you know, change 50 likes a month. I wasn't gonna be able to do that if I just waited for people to come to me. Not with 2,100 followers. I had to go out and I had to actively find them. I had to work with what I had right now. And so I created a system that is super easy to duplicate. I have, you know, I really, really love for you guys to take this week and do it. Okay, take today's Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, five days to do this. And I want you to tag me in it. But I have a little binder that looks like this. I have a binder that looks like this, and I just went in, and I started at actually just a notebook. This was strictly my, in, my inviting Instagram inviting notebook. So when I was using this, I'll show you what it looks like. You have one through 35, these 35 names. One through 35, 35 through 70. There are 70 possibilities right here on this piece of paper. That's 70 opportunities for you to get your fingertips inside of 70 people's inboxes. Like, could you, I, whenever I talk to my girls and I'm in, they like start doing this. Like even if they do it Monday, Wednesday, Friday, they all get successful by the end of the by the end of the week because people need to be contacted. People need that final hook. And so this was the method I started in January and has completely changed my business. Getting my fingertips into sixty to seventy inboxes each and every single day. And so when I say that, I don't mean it's a new invite every day, but it is whatever they need. And so let's say I go to my Instagram profile and I, you know. I click my followers. I will type in A, so the letter A. And everybody who follows me, that Instagram handle begins with the letter A pops up. And I just go through those people. The next day I'll do B, the next day I'll do C, the next day I'll do D. And that's just one way to do it. If you start scrolling through those people, open their inbox to see what they need. Do they need a relationship built? Do they need a follow-up? Do they need a new invite? Do they just need to, you know, just to tell, for you to tell them how cute their dog is? Whatever it is that they need, this is 70 opportunities for you to build a relationship with them or continue that relationship, okay? And so that's one way that I do it. I do it based on people who are watching my Instagram story and then based on people who are liking my content on my actual feed. And so finding 70 people each and every single day, returning people, returning relationships, and just ongoing relationships as well. So in here, 
I actually just created this on like a document, but I am now doing 60. So I do one through six or one through 30, 31 through 60. And I do this five days a week. And it's just easy. I go through and I write down every single handle that I talk to. Now, whenever I get a response back, I circle it. So whenever somebody responds back to me, I circle it. And whenever I send out a link for them to order, I star it. This is just a really easy way for me to stay on top of my piece. Circle if they respond back to me, star it if, if I send them the price. And then really what I love that I've started doing is on the next page, sorry, this is hard to see, I should have seen this a document. I write down the people who said they were gonna order, who I sent a link to, and then that's just a place for me, it's a blank piece of paper, it's a, it's a blank place for me to take notes if I'm doing PD that day, when I'm doing PD that day, if I'm doing any trainings that day, if I you know, have it, want to do a brain dump, it gives me a place to do that on an active piece of paper right on the same side. And so, you know, as I progress through the week, I can go back and I can see all the people who said they were going to order. I can look back at my notes. I can reflect on all the people who I circled, who responded. I, on my Sunday, I can go in and I can follow up with all those people. This method changed my business. It changed my volume. It helped me triple my income. It has changed everything, the amount of lives that I change every single month, and it has changed the way my coaches are running their businesses because it's so easy to duplicate. So if I can give you one task, it is to take out a notebook, a simple notebook. I had a little pink notebook designated just for invites, and do this five days this week, okay? I want to hold you guys accountable, so if you do it tonight, when you do it tonight, write out those 60 to 70 names, post them here, love for you to see or I'd love to see it and then at the end of the week tell me the change you've seen in your business because you're going to get more ongoing relationships you're going to get more ongoing conversations you're going to get more yeses you're going to get a hell of more you're going to get a ton more no's but you're going to feel so much better because the reason I love love doing it this way is that I was the type of person where I'd be like all right I'm going to go lay on the couch and send invites and then my dog would have to go to the bathroom and I needed to get a drink of water but then I'd be like oh you know I already sent invites today I'm good I had nothing to quantify, you know, the amount of invites I was sending. And now this way, it's quantifiable. If I want to wake up in the morning and bust out 15, perfect. But I know staring at me on my desk is however many more waiting for me to finish that day. It's quantifiable. We cannot determine our worth in this business by the amount of people that say yes. We cannot determine our worth in this business by the amount of successful points we have. We can only control the controllable. And this is one of those things that is so controllable. Okay? So do that. I don't think I have any questions. I only have one comment. What's the one comment that I have? I can't even see it. Hmm. Okay. Well, I guess I don't have any, any questions. If you do have any questions and you want to ask them um, on my Twitter, you can end it. I will post it, or if I have any YouTube videos, I will post them. I just muted you <laughs> until you do it. Um, so I watched that earlier today and I was just like, this all makes so much sense. Um, some of the th some of the things I took notes on before and I stuck them in the chat box here. So like for the challenge group, for example, you should know all those things. When are we going to start? What is the name of it? Um, how many people can you have on your team? Uh, what are we going to be focusing on? Incentives, daily posts, points, et cetera. Um, I have, I put that list in the chat box. So if you guys want to copy and paste that, you can, but you should know those questions and know those answers to every single group. You're going, if you run a group on your own or you're going to, you decide you want to run a free group or you're going to do a, um, like an influencer, like what is coaching kind of group, you should still have all of those questions answered. So when you're talking and inviting to people, you know exactly who you're inviting, um, like who you are talking to. Uh, I really, really loved how she said, who, who were we pre Beachbody before we signed up? Who were we? Because who we are now and who we were then is completely different. And when she said that she would go back and pay $5,000 for the 21 day fix, if she knew where it would be now, I would have paid $5,000 for my startup fee for this business. So like you can spin that in any direction you want to go with, with that kind of thing. Like I, you, you all know that I am totally business driven when it comes to, comes to coaching and such, but, um, and like my passion lies in the business, but I would 100% have gone back in time and paid way more than 39.99 to start a business from home. 
because it's given me that free note but with my children to like change everything for us. Um, let me think. Oh, the if I blank, would you blank mindset. I really think that that's a powerful way to invite. If I do X, Y, and Z, would you do X, Y, and Z? So if, if I told you that I have this amazing group where all of this, you guys pre beach body, what I needed was community. I needed people. I needed people to tell me that I was good at something. <laughs> I needed people to, um, tell me that like what I was doing was what I should be doing. Um, I needed people to just surround me and support me and lift me up is what I needed when I started Beachbody. I still need that. Like, let's be honest. That's like one of my driving factors. Um, but I feel like it's easy for me to talk to people who also need that. It's hard for me to talk to people who are like, they've got that support system, the, the stable marriage. Like I don't even, I don't even relate. Like I don't even get it. <laughs> so, um, when I'm talking to people, if I, and I don't share enough about that to like go back and actually talk specifically to those people. So that was something that really resonated with me. Um, her Instagram story suggestions. I put those in the chat box too. So video about a group, video about a group, and then the image. So like you're talking about your challenge group, two, two videos talking about your challenge group. And then the image saying like, these are the people that have signed up and tagging them so that they can reshare it into their stories if they want to. But um, then saying how many spots you have left. And then a few slides with results. And then a poll so that you have people you can invite from that poll. Uh, a tip with polls, never have it be a yes or no question, never a, a positive and a negative, always two positive. So um, do you want to join my group? Of course I do. Sign me up. Not yes, I do. No, I don't. Like you don't want to have negativity in your polls ever. So always make it two positive answers. They can either answer it or skip it. That way you can invite anyone that comments. Um, and then the belief factor, like know that it's going to change their life. I know I just mentioned this a second ago, but know that it's going to change their life because none of us would still be here. This business gets hard and it's not that it's rocket science, but it's just, it's tedious and it's consistency and it's, and it gets hard and it's, uh, letdowns and failures. We've got someone on the team who has been struggling today because a simple mistake can ruin a goal that you have. And that's super hard and it, you get down on yourself about it. And it happens to all of us, every single one of us. Um, you drop rank or you don't hit success club or you don't hit that goal to get a prize or whatever it is that happens to all of us. And it would be easy to throw in the, the towel, but we're still here because this has changed our life. We're still here because we know what it can still do for our lives. So um, make, sure you, make sure you have that belief in this business before you even try to send an invite. If you are doubting this business, if you are doubting yourself, don't go send invites. Do some personal development because it's gonna come right through your invites and it's gonna be a waste of your time. Um, and then when she said, you deserve to try. When she, she said that she tells her people, you deserve to try. I thought that was like super powerful. Like they, everyone deserves to try. Like who in this world deserves not to try to do this? like knowing what we can possibly do for ourselves, like everyone deserves to try. Um, should we start talking about new group tomorrow? When our, yeah, you can start talking about the new group whenever you're ready. I think at this point it's going to be difficult to add people into fitness feud. So I would just hold everybody off, let them order, let it come in, get them started in the new challenge group. We will have the new challenge group open before the 13th so that they can get in there and start looking at prep week and stuff like that, but the actual challenge will start the 13th. So sometime the week before, we'll have it all open. Um, you can totally do it however you want. If you wanna like tease them a little bit about like, oh, our next one's coming and it's gonna be so fun, and then like kind of like tease them if you want to, whatever, whatever strategy you wanna do with that. I'm so glam today. Um, I don't really know. This is, I texted Ashley this morning uh, because I, wore my hair like this for the workout, my workout this morning. And then it also looked like this after the workout. So either I'm very versatile or a scumbag, one of the two. Um, who wants to do, who wants to do this 70 invite a day challenge with me? What'd you say? 50? Okay. So we'll change it to 50. Who's in? 
I've got three. Come on, come on. I need to see all these hands. Who's gonna do it with me? Just don't forget that's also including follow-ups, intro, that's just 50 messages to get out there. Get in 50 people's in inboxes. 50 inboxes a day, every single day for the next week. So five days of the next seven. I'm gonna try and make 30 of them invites and the other 20 just whatever. I'm gonna try, I mean, I don't really care, but. I'm gonna make my, before I leave here tonight, because I'm here and why would I go home? I'm going to write down 50 names before I leave here tonight. Do you know how easy that makes inviting, by the way? If you don't have to sit there and wonder who you're going to invite, you have a list of 50 names. It'll take you 20 minutes to go through and message 50 people. Question, the people like you, just, like I've been friend requesting a lot of people and then messaging them like, hey, kind of like introducing myself. Like they're looking at my messages, but they're not responding to me. Like how long should I, should I invite them? Like if it's been like a month or something or just like if they've never responded to you at all, like I just sometimes don't know how to approach that. What does your message say? Uh... Hold on. Let's start with that. Just to start. Um, that. Hold on. I sent out a bunch yesterday because I friend request. I friend request a couple people, and then I wait like a couple days or so, and then I like introduce myself and say, "Hey, girl, just wanted to say thanks for the recent ad. Uh, I see we have uh, many mutual friends, and I'm always looking to connect with new friends. So before I go commenting on all your posts, um, I just wanted to say, hey. Like that. I like that. I would maybe make it just a little shorter so it didn't seem so formal. Is that like, just kind of think of like, what would you actually say to somebody? Uh, I'd be like, yo, what up girl? No, I'm just <laughs> well, that's what I mean. Like use your personality and like let yeah. that shine through. Um, yeah. because, because people can read right through that because every one of us sends a message similar to that. Yeah. So that you're not the first person they get that message from. So to, to eliminate the ignoring, um, throw your flair in there be like oh what's up I just wanted to say hey like it's great connecting with you or like um didn't want you to think I was like a creeper like that's what I usually say something like that um but always make it me just make it like that's what I've been trying to do like in talking in my stories too but I'm, I'm just I am like you know I don't care I'm an f-bomb kind of mom you know I'm always saying fuck in front of my kids too <laughs> But, um, so, but just end with a question, always end with a question. So you solicit a response. Okay. So I usually do like, where are you from? Even if I obviously know, cause it says right at the top of their profile, I play stupid and I'm like, Oh, where are you from? Like, or whatever, something like that. Or how old are your kiddos or something, something very random. I have something like, Oh, did you go to West Milford? Cause like I, I'm to West Milford, so I, I do, I try some, but I'll do more like that. So like, because those people will probably more likely respond if there's like an actual question you're asking. Um, but beyond that, I, I don't really invite people who don't respond to me unless they've watched my story or looked at a post or done something. Um, and if they don't respond to me and like, I'm going through my Facebook list right now and like deleting people who don't respond to me. So if I have sent them a message and they haven't responded, if I sent them an intro and they didn't respond, I will send them a cold invite. But if I've sent them a cold invite and an intro and they haven't responded, I will delete them because like they aren't clearly interested. If they've read it, like you can see they've seen it and like, They've never commented on any of your stuff. Like, I just delete them. That, that's what I figured. I figured, like, I'll message these people, and then, like, if they obviously if they, like, like my stuff, then I'll be like, okay, that's my chance to, like, start, like, talking to them more. So I just wanted to know, like, basically, if they don't answer anything or don't like any of the things or watch your stories, kind of just blow them through. They're that's pretty people. much because. Okay. All right. What did anybody else take away from this? Anybody? I was kind of only half listening, <laughs> but, um, and I think I, we already talked about this in another call, but I haven't been doing it. I want to take objections that people give me in my messages and turn them into posts. We learned about it and I never did it. <laughs> yeah. I want to do it. It's, that's a super powerful thing because like she said, like if you have that objection, so does Sally and Susan and everybody else. They all have that because they're all you before you started. Um, so think about the objections you had and use those in your posts. And if someone tells you something, like totally make it a post or a story or anything like that. That's a good one. Anybody else? Take big 
big points away? Um, I guess I have a question. I think the big point for me was who were you before you started coaching? Because I struggle with that. Thanks, but, um, but questions I have, I have 530 Facebook friends, including guys and my grandparents. I don't know how to not run out of people. And I know that you have to keep adding people, but I'd have to add a lot of people. To, and so that's kind of my question is how do I expand my cold market? And like, I don't know, I will watch Kate Schultz's sometimes Taylor posted her in one of our groups. And I, because she's like, I came from this one horse town and nobody in my town. And that's kind of where I'm from. I'm literally from a town called Summer Duck before I moved to Tampa. And it is as small as it sounds like it is. And not to say nobody there cares about their health or fitness, but I'm from a place where like, it, it's not a health conscientious place. And so I don't even, when I like had to like write a list of people to invite, it is seriously a struggle because I'm like, there are people who probably benefit from this, but getting anybody to get out of that like small town mentality is very, 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 very challenging. Um, I'm going to have Denise talk on this. Okay. Actually, I was just going to say, can I answer this question? <laughs> um, AJ, I had uh, 625 friends last June, and today I hit 2001. So I have added a lot of people in the last, um, what, 11 months? So what I do, I know this is a little bit different than what Stephanie does because I think she has a better – niche to go into but what I do is I start looking at the um the suggested friends and then I go in and I look at each of the profiles and I try to see if it's somebody that I think would fit into my niche and then I request it and I do that every single day and I do at least 10 people if not more and then um after they just started saying yes <laughs> but I do <laughs> I literally do that every single day. And I know, I think Stephanie has said that she goes in and, and looks at like somebody that she already knows is in her niche and she starts looking at her, those friends, right? Steph, and that's how you start adding people. Yeah. But, um, you have to start adding people every single friggin' day. Like for a while, it just became one of my hobbies. Like I would just get on Facebook and start adding friends, even if I had already added them earlier in the day. And okay. So some other tips though, uh, to, in addition to that, people aren't going to respond or accept your friend request if you have a private profile or if your profile doesn't show who you are, which AJ, I think we still need to work on because if you come to your profile, I like, I just came to your profile and I see a memory, which is cute. But then I see loans from somebody else that posted to you. I see steps to buying a home. Um, then someone else commented on your page and someone else comments on your page and tagged you and something. And then you've got a missing girl thing. I don't know anything about you other than, Oh, you sell homes, but I'm not buying a house. So I'm not interested. Everyone's into fitness, but okay. you, and, and then this other, so like you, I would focus on your profile before you even like get really, really consistent with sharing, really, really consistent with sharing every single day. Like you did your video a couple weeks ago or like a week ago. It was last mm -hmm. week. And that was like perfect. But I haven't really seen like any posts since then. So if you aren't being consistent and showing up multiple times a day, you're not going to have people accepting your friend request back. Okay. That makes sense. That makes sense. Because, and I would take your phone number off. But yeah, I know you're a realtor, but that would scare me. Keeping my phone number on there. Um, okay. <laughs> just so you know. <laughs> just so you know. I don't know if I would keep it on there. Totally your call. But um, if it's linked to any addresses or anything like that, just safety of you all um, with a public profile. Um, but also your profile is not public. So they're not going to see all of your posts. So they're not going to know anything about who you are. They just know that they won't, you don't, they don't know you and you only have 500 friends. So they're going to think like they don't know you and they just won't accept it. So those are, those are my tips to like really expand your market, which is obviously the number one thing we need to do. Consistent sharing is the number one thing I can say for anybody on this call though, is to consistently share multiple times a day on their social media to show who you are. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. 
don't take that as too tough of love. That's just, that's just. No, it's totally fine. Yeah, no, it's totally fine. Cause I need that. I need to know the thing. And I, I suck at time management and it's so easy for me to just like forget and three days has gone by or whatever. So I have to get better at that. Checklists. That's why you need to get one of a power hour sheet or that book that um, Issa was showing us the rise up planner. Um, anything like that. You need a book with a checklist that you complete every single day. I wouldn't, I wouldn't survive without my checklist or I would, and I would not do all the things. I would only do a few of the things each day. Um, I just saw Kat had said she needs to start adding more on Instagram. What's working really well for me on Instagram. Um, some tips that I've learned because they just did a whole new, um, a new revamp of like all the algorithms with Instagram, like nothing works anymore on Instagram. It's all broken. But what I suggest doing is adding like 50 to a hundred people a day and then unfollowing them all who don't follow you back the next day. And then adding a whole bunch more of the same that next day and unfollowing. And you can use the cleaner app for unfollowing, but there's no tools out there right now safe for following. So you need to do the following all yourself. I, I do it the same way I do on Facebook. I find a girl who like is my niche and I go follow the people who like her posts. And I'll do like 50 to 100 of those each day. Um, or I'll go to a brand. So like I went to this baby shop downtown in Charleston and they had a few brands there that I, I bought like a little swaddle for my little girl. And um, I bought like I bought something and then there was also like a stroller that I really liked. So I found those brands on Instagram and I was looking at their, the people that followed them because uh, the store was expensive. So these people have money. <laughs> so the people that are going to buy these brands have money. So I was looking at all those, the people that follow those and I was following those people. Um, so that's an option. But then the next day I go through and I unfollow so that I'm not following a whole bunch of, you want your followers to be a lot higher than your following right? Is that right? Is that the right number? Right words? I think I was using the right words. You want your followers to be a lot higher than your following. So you, oh, you want to always keep that number down. That's why I don't like, I'm afraid that's honestly like, it's funny you said that. Cause like, that's why I don't want to follow too many people. Cause I have so many like people that I'm following. Maybe I need to like go through my list though. And unfollow like a lot of the people that use the app cleaner app cleaner. It's the app is called cleaner cleaner. Oh my okay. gosh. Yeah. You do have a lot more that you're following. So just use that cleaner app and you're going to select everyone who's not following you. Okay. And then you can un it'll unfollow all those people for you, but okay. do like 50 at a time. 50 at a time. Okay. Yeah. So that okay. way it doesn't like lock you out. Okay. Your Instagram's super cute though. Oh, and it's all you. mommy. Um, some tips for you. Oh, okay. You had, you were doing it really yeah. good with it for a while, but, yeah. um, go back and so every scroll, every time you go like look at one one feed on your screen of pictures, I should know all the things. I should know that you are into fitness. You show me a transformation. You show me a coaching post, and you show me whatever else your niche is about. So maybe it's about family or whatever. Make sure you have all those things in each scroll, so that way it kind of keeps you accountable to like showing up for your workout, showing up for your transformation, showing up for coaching in each scroll. To keep the variety there. Um, and it looks like you're doing, you're doing pretty good with that actually. You were doing a lot more transformations before. Also that little tip of like, don't make it the cat show, make it uh, like share, re recognize other coaches and their transformations and that kind of stuff. Um, that's super helpful too. And as you come to team events, you'll be able to share more team photo stuff too. <laughs> when we finally get to see you in person. Sorry. You're fine. Is this the right one? <clears throat> um, Insta clean. There was two cleaner. No, it should be just be called the cleaner app. Let me see the picture. It should be um, colorful, I think. Uh, no, it's this four. It's it, there should be four images cleaner in like a for, rainbow background. There's cleaner for ins and cleaner for IG. <laughs> cleaner for IG is probably what it is. Let me see what that image looks like. It's the four squares. Yeah, that's the one. So cleaner for IG. Use these at your own risk because no. What? Can I say something else about Instagram? 
So I've been, um, I've been really trying to focus on just building followers as well. And I have been getting some traction in the last couple of weeks. I went from having like 30 people in the last seven days, look at my page up to, I think it was like 284 today. So I'm definitely getting more people to actually looking at the page. Um, but I've been taking that, I don't know, I can't remember her name, but um, Stephanie helped hook me up with a- Insta a breakout. Training. Yeah, instant breakout. And one of the things that um, she was saying was about the hashtag. So I've been trying to really, really focus on, um, I hate just sitting there typing hashtags all day long. So I've been trying to do like four or five really quality ones um, each time I post. And then I've been trying to put a good hashtag on each section of my video. Um, and I think that's helping. Mm -hmm. So hashtags on your stories help a, a ton. Only one hashtag per story. Um, tagging locations is really helpful. So like I've been tagging like where we are in Charleston and stuff. For some reason that's gaining a lot of traction. Um, and then your your hashtags, the, the way that that changed, used, it used to be like get 30 hashtags. Get 30 hashtags, find your 30 that you love and just put them in the first comment of every post. Now they want you to use specific hashtags that are related to your post. Don't over spam with the same hashtags because if you're just spamming hashtags using the same ones over and over again, it like thinks you're a robot. So it will, it, these are things that can like get your account shut down. So don't do, don't do those things. Um, use specific hashtags. I usually do like eight to 10 just because I don't want to sit there and write hashtags all day either. So I try to think of ones that are doing really well. Some, for some reason, the gender reveal ones are incredible. Um, my views without using any tools or anything are up to my profile visits are like 1788. Oh, you're going to, you're making me like depressed now because I thought 284 was good. Just use the gender reveal the hashtags. Yeah. Like just um, I'm not going to be there. having any babies. <laughs> yeah. I just be like, let me, let me gender reveal my 23 year old son. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, but for some reason that hashtag is working out really well. Um, but I do think, I think, yeah, focusing in on trying to get good hashtags is really helping me. And I'm just going to keep watching that number. I'm going to get up to the 1700s. There so. you go. So also, just so everybody knows, I did not build my account to 13,000 followers without paying for it. Okay. Just so you guys know, I did spend some money to build that account. Um, I bought into some contests. I think I did three contests. Um, that were like 60 to a hundred dollars each time. And it gives you followers. They are not niche followers. Um, there are some contests that are better than others, but, um, I bought, they, they call them loops. So basically you purchase a spot in a contest where there's big brands giving away like a thousand dollar gift card to Starbucks or something like that. And it's a, in order for people to participate in that giveaway, they have to follow everyone who is like on the contest. So I don't have to do anything. I just have to buy in and then I'm like just listed. And then everybody follows me who participates in the contest. Usually it's like U S and Latin followers. So most of them are Latin followers. I'll be honest. <laughs> or I get like a lot of people from like Argentina or Brazil or something like that. Um, so they weren't niched per se, but it grew my account really quickly. So I did it till I had like 10,000 followers. Um, so I had that swipe up feature in my stories and then I went back and uh, like started following people like naturally, organically or whatever. So that way I was talking to my niche again. I follow more people than those who follow me. So I just found the thing up and I follow 50 people. Yeah, Morgan, you can keep doing that. I just wouldn't do more than 50 per hour. Um, when I'm cleaning my mine out, I like set a timer in my phone. So like every hour I'll go in and like do it again and just clean out 50 an hour. It is depressing when people don't follow you. My sister doesn't follow me. My sister. My sister. I don't even think we're, I think we're friends on Facebook, but she doesn't even like pictures of my kids because she unfollowed me on Facebook. Anyway. So, okay. What? Go ahead. So I am like torn because like Facebook, I've always been more comfortable with and mm -hmm. I have like more engagement on my stuff on Facebook. Um, but my stories on Instagram, I get a lot more people watching the stories on Instagram, but not so much commenting on any of my posts on Instagram, which I'm still working on it. I have no idea what I'm doing with Instagram. You and me both, babe. <laughs> you and me both. 
So I was just looking at, at my Instagram right now and I'm like, hmm, how do I know who's, who's not following me? I, that's how much I don't know about Instagram. Um, you, you won't know who, if you look, if you click on following up at the top. Yeah. Um, no, just kidding. You can't tell who's not following you. You can't tell who's not following you. That's why you have to use the app cleaner. Okay. okay. Download the app cleaner and then it, you'll log in with your Instagram credentials and then you can, it'll do it for you. Gotcha. Yes. Okay. Um, so in terms, I need to do some trainings on Instagram to get on YouTube, figure. YouTube, yeah. Instagram training. But um, mm -hmm. do you have a profile that is a, a business page or a personal page on Instagram? Personal. Link it to your Facebook. It'll share the stories right to your Facebook page. It does, but I just, I like the people viewing my stories. I get a lot more people viewing the stories on Instagram than I do on Facebook. Sure, totally. Because not many people use Facebook stories yet, but I do think it's going to keep growing. So keep doing it. Might have caught up. I get equal on Facebook and Instagram now. I don't get Wait, equal, but I get. Can you link a regular Facebook? I thought it had to be a page. No, you can, you can link a business page to a business page or a personal page to a personal page. Hmm. Wow. Yeah, both you of mine are link, personal. Yeah, my Instagram's a business page. So that links to like, I made a like page for Facebook. So it links to that. What if I just make my Instagram not a business page? <laughs> There's some reason there's a downfall to that. And I think it's because like you can't run business from your Instagram account. Um, also, I think that there's something about maybe it's for advertising. I don't know. I don't know exactly why, but I was told to do it. So I did. But again, I'm not an Instagram professional. It would make it so much easier to share my stories directly from there. But you know that Facebook, like you can't, when you even share from face, Instagram to Facebook, like to your feed, you don't get any reach. So there, it might be part, partly. I don't care about that. Just the stories. I know, but it might do this. It might affect the stories too. That's all. It will be easier, but. Silly question. Some, one of my challengers just like, uh, like want it. Cause like you can review the tech, like, cause you know how you said you don't want like too much busyness on yeah. your page or whatever. So she just like posted a thing like with the Shakeology, but not showing, like showing the cup, but not what it says on the back of the cup. Like, should I add that to my page? Cause she's like shouting me out. She said, thanks uh, cat brand for helping me make a lifestyle change. Like, do you think that that's probably good to add to my page or no? To your stories. To my stories. Okay. okay. I think it would. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. If you guys, did you guys watch the curiosity marketing video today? It did Where not. Nicola, okay. In this new coach training, you better go watch it because the curiosity marketing one is a good one. It talks about like, it is a good one in that training. So it's Nicola. And she's like, instead of doing this and like holding your cup, she's like, do this. And she shows you how to like use curiosity marketing and she's trying to be really funny and it actually, it works. So that's a good one. I would recommend watching. So quick question. Mm -hmm. Can you look at my pages and see what I'm, what I'm doing wrong or need could do better? Mm -hmm. What is your Instagram handle? Um, Ellie underscore OG three, I think. You have a new follower. Me. Um, So for a little while you were like, work out, work out, work out, work out, work out, work out, work out. Mm -hmm. And it was nothing about life. And now you're more like life, 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 life with a very few workouts. So I would try to figure out that balance of mm -hmm. doing the same. Um, I would more about um, more transformations, mm -hmm. a transformation in each scroll I would recommend. Um, in each scroll. What do you mean by that? I don't so know. Like, what it, <laughs> so like, I, that's probably silly. But. So in this scroll, mm -hmm. I don't see a transformation. Can you move those around? No, not no. once they're posted. So you okay. just have to like re like re align how you're going to be sharing. So if you uh -huh. look at mine at one point I was doing like quotes and then I was doing like workout of the day and like my, my visual of my feed has changed so many times, but, um, you just kind of 
got to figure out what, what your people like. Mm -hmm. And, um, one of the tips that I really like that Haley Christian gave a long time ago was if you're going to post a lot of pictures of yourself, never post the same angle twice. Like don't let the corners touch. So if you're posting like a picture of you, like a picture like this, all corners around you, all surrounding you, you shouldn't have another profile picture. Okay. Um, you should like be doing something else. Like it shouldn't be like selfie after selfie after selfie because mm -hmm. no one wants that. So like do different angles, do take a picture of like your drink downwards. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. do different angles and stuff like that. Um, so I've been debating if I should just delete all my old ones because I just started no. Instagram. Like I wouldn't no. delete anything. I would just pick. So when I transition into like a new, new look or a new filter or something like that, I try to do like six. I like put like six up and then I just go from there like one a day. I just try to put like a bunch of content up right away and then transition from there. Gotcha. To make it look like a more dramatic transition. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thanks. But I, I mean, your content's always good. Ellie, you I feel like I say the, the Ellie, same thing over and over again. Oh, and I, I don't, I don't think so. No? Um, okay. I think you always do good when you're doing good and then you go away and you yeah. have to start over. So mm -hmm. I think for you, it's just, you need to stop stopping because every time you stop, you have to start over. You have to start pushing that ball back up that hill. Every time you stop, it rolls backwards. Yeah. So I think for you, it's just a matter of like, even in the busy, busy days, finding that small crack to keep that momentum going. Mm-hmm. That's honestly like, because but you, I think you know that, like, you know, that yeah. you're like, oh, yeah. busy. but yeah. when you're doing the things you do them and you do them great. So I don't really have like a lot to tell you negatively. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, thanks. <laughs> you're welcome. I just got to keep at it. I, yeah. Sometimes it's, when life is just so, so crazy busy, I, uh, fail. Yeah. Myself really. So what is your new last name? Johnson. Yeah. Are you using your book, Ellie? Your Rise Up book? Yes and no. <laughs> Are you using the at least the checklist on the bottom, like filling it in with your checklist and marking it off every day? If I had Not to pick one thing to do, that would be it. <laughs> I think Not you guys should work together with on that. Yeah, like set realistic goals together and like maybe have her like check in with you for accountability each week just on that. That's probably good because you see me when you're like, who wants to do 50 day? I'm like, yeah, I totally want to do that. Mm -hmm. I can, I can make myself believe that I'm going to do it and I'm really going to try. Well, you're but going to because I just made a group and you're part of it. <laughs> I had, when we first got these rise up books, I had 60 invites per day and I wasn't doing them for like two weeks. I could not do it. So then I just went down to 40. Like I was like, I'm not just going to keep, cause then I would do like 15 and be like, well, I'm not going to do it. But now right. that I went down to 30 or 40 per day, I've mm -hmm. been able to do it every day. Mm -hmm. So really make realistic goals. Yeah. Yeah. My, I really had to be realistic with my goals too. And even in terms of like doing personal development seven days a week, it's not going to happen for me. I do it five. I, just put five. Yep. <laughs> I, like, I do audible because that's like the only way I'll get it in. Like me too, like, but still it's only five. <laughs> yeah. I, I do too because on the weekends I really don't drive. I only like when I go to work, I'm like, I'm like, thank God for work because I'm getting my PD in. <laughs> I'm the drove, same way. I just listen to it in my car, honestly, because thinking about having time to read makes me stress out because <laughs> I don't have time to read it. Yesterday, I'd take my girlfriend to the airport at four o'clock in the morning and I listened to it like all the way back. But then today I was like, okay, fine. I will listen to my 10 minutes and I did it while cleaning and I had the dishes. So I did it. Mm. But I, I will not just sit there and listen to audio. That is a waste of my time. Like I am too busy of a person to just sit there and listen to audio. So I have to be doing something else. Yeah. But I always get something from it, so it isn't a waste of my time. So I am, um, I'm taking the, I was looking to, I ran downstairs to get my notes. Um, Ellie, one thing that might help you, I took that Insta breakout class too, and I'm not completely done with it. I'm like halfway through it. Um, but one of the things that she said is that there's like apps that you can get. I, I think she said, there's three I wrote down. I think she said Planoly is what she uses. It's P-L-A-N-O-L-Y or Schedugram. Um, but she said that what she recommends is that you batch your content, that you like sit down for three to four hours and plan out a full month 
which seems excessive, but she said that it really works. And so you figure if it's like half of a work day and then you, you have it all done. And she said that she'll like take a bunch of pictures in like the same weekend. She'll change her clothes and she'll do stuff like that. But I don't know how busy she is or how busy you are. Cause when she said that, I was like, Oh, okay, sure. So, that's going to fucking work. Like, that's no, that, that's, not gonna work. that's that, always an issue for me too. Like time to take pictures. I feel like <laughs> Like I, right after I got home, before we got on this call, actually, I went outside because I have a cute shirt on and I kind of did my hair today. So I went outside and took some pictures. Um, but honestly, like finding time to actually take a decent picture. Is, is I mean, hard. that sounds really silly. It, that sounds silly, but I, know. <laughs> I, get it. I live in Florida. I live in the most humid state in the country. Yeah. So I look like, no, we picture. totally get it because we're the same way. That's why like I, uh, took the golf cart out today and my tripod and took some pictures, but, um, like that totally makes sense. The only difference and that works really, the, the scheduling post works really well for like photographers and stuff like that, but it's really hard for our, and it probably work really well for like the reality side of your business, but it's really hard for fitness because you're going to be fake. If you're posting a month in advance, like you're not sharing your daily journey then, you know what I mean? It's very different, but people want to see you real guys. Like, so taking these fun, pretty po photos are obviously great for Instagram. They're great for engagement. They're great for like invite posts, but people want to see the mess. If you want to see my mess today, my kid pooped on the floor twice. Like that's yeah. the part that people really, really want to see because it's the part that all of you just laughed at and you're like, yep, my kid's done that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You don't relate to me dressed up like this in target. Like, cause this isn't real life. Like yeah. nobody gets it. So, um, yeah like share the realness and don't be so perfect. Don't worry if your hair is perfect, your makeup's done, like just share. There's really good filters and apps for all the flyaways. That's what I kind of like, I know you said like when you work out, like I, I try to like wear cute workout clothes, but I really don't like wear makeup like like too much, but, but yeah. like, um, but like, I feel like just people are, yeah, like, yes. you know, I don't yes. even, I'm just like, I roll out of bed. I'm like, let me try to fix my crazy hair. Yes. But I feel like people seeing me like without makeup, but then when I put, like, I posted a really pretty picture the other day and I got like 130 yeah. something likes on it. And I'm like, holy cow. Like, and it, I, you know, it does I'm make like, a difference. Yeah. Um, so people like seeing both, uh, you know, she, oh, she can look pretty, but she is a hot mess express, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Mama. I'm the opposite. I wear makeup every Mama. single day. I literally like don't wear makeup. It's my favorite thing. <laughs> I love makeup. My computer's got four percent battery, guys. So we gotta jump off. But um, I love this. I started a, a group chat with everyone who said they're in. So go write your names of fifty. I'm gonna write my names of fifty before I leave, and I have to buy milk, and then I'm heading home. So unless Ashley has milk, then I'll stop at your house. I do. Do you have enough? Extra? Yeah. Hold on, I'm coming to your house. So I'll be there as soon as I write 50 names down. Oh, come on. <laughs> Go live in your box, Sav. Where is it? All right. I will talk to you guys later. Have a good night. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you so no much. Problem. Have a good night. Bye.